Welcome to this Learn to Play video for The Partisans, a game of political ideas. In this game, you're going to play one of six political ideologies, not a political party. You're going to try to pass bills and get the government to focus on things that move the country in a direction that your ideology wants it to move. So let's see how it works. We'll start with setup. Setup for the partisans is pretty straightforward. You're going to want to take the red bill markers and put them on the red spots here. You'll want to take these blue purple markers, put them on their spots. You'll want to take the 10 yellow cubes and put them on the start spots on the priority tracker. A little extra here, All right? Then you're gonna to wanna to take the three small decks of cards. You'll shuffle them together and you'll put them where they go. There's the lobby cards. There goes the event cards and the political action cards go over here. Next, you're gonna figure out who is which faction. There are six factions in the game. These are political ideologies and you will randomly deal these out to the players. The game plays well at four, five, or six players. I find it to be most fun at uh, six players, which is nice because everyone needs more games at six players. Then you want to take the one D10, put it somewhere on the board. Each player also has a, a matching victory point uh, track counter. You can see that it matches the icon of the particular political ideology in this case. You're gonna to wanna to take those markers and put them on the zero for victory point tracker. Now, the only thing left you have to do to, before you finish setting up the board is fill these spots. These are where the various amendments for the bills go. And to do that, you're going to take these randomizer chits over here. They have the word issue in the back. Then you will pull any two of them. In this case, I pulled employment and national security. So I will go to the amendment cards and I would take all of the employment and all of the national security ones. I would shuffle these together and I put them on one of the spots and I move the issues up here. Then I would do the same for all the other spots. To finish setup, you're going to deal each player two cards from the political action deck and one card from the lobby deck. The lobby deck, the lobbies you have are public. Everybody knows who's giving you money. So those need to be face up. The political action cards, they're your sneaky tricks and they can be face down. Lastly, take the pile of political capital, that's these green chips right here, put them somewhere where everybody can reach them. And then the last thing you're gonna do is decide who gets the senior committee board and the junior committee board. You do this randomly, you can roll uh, the D10 if you want to to figure out who gets them. And for this example, we'll say that the communitarian here becomes the senior committee leader. The senior committee leader, the senior committee is made up of the leader and the two players to that leader's right. So the senior committee is the communitarian, the bourgeois, and the libertarians. The junior committee board is then given to the next player to the right, forming the junior committee of the blue collars, the traditionalists, and the nationalists. Now that you got the game set up, let's look at how a turn works. Before we get into turns, there's an important two sections of the rules to look at right here on page six and seven. These allow the players to decide a couple different ways to play the game and let you act sort of like a founder as a person who wrote uh, the rules for the country. For this example, we're gonna use the top choice. Once you know how to play the game, as players, you can choose whichever version you wanna play. This is kind of fun. It kind of lets you write the constitution of how your game works. Okay, on to turns. At the start of each turn, players are gonna get some of these. These are political capital. 
They represent the money and influence and power that you have in the government. Each turn, you're going to get four political capital plus one additional political capital for each lobby you have. So in this first turn, everyone's going to get five political capital. Then players are going to draw one additional political action card. If they have more than five political action cards, they'll need to discard down to five. Then any player who does not have a lobby, maybe they lost it in the previous turn, they will draw one new lobby from the lobby deck. If either of these two decks run out during this phase, just reshuffle the discard pile and make a new deck. The next step is having committee hearings. The way this works is the senior committee player, in this case, the communitarian, is going to pick one of these stacks of amendments. Um, let's say crime and global warming. They will then draw eight cards, four, five, six, seven, eight cards, and they will keep those eight cards with them. The junior committee chair will then pick a different stack of amendments, let's say education, immigration, and they will take eight cards out of there, eight, all right, and now the committees meet. What that means is, for instance, the senior committee here of the communitarian, bourgeois, and libertarian, uh, led by the committee chair, are going to look through the eight potential amendments and try to craft a bill. At the end, the bill will have between one and three of these amendments in it. What they're gonna try to do is craft a bill that's good for them um, meaning that their faction icons and lobby icons appear on the top. Sometimes you actually want them on the negative side. It depends on how you're playing. Um, but that's what people are looking at in this case. So these negotiations are going to happen at the same time. The senior committee will decide on their bill. The junior committee will decide on their bill. Once one of the committees is done, the other committee has you know, 30 seconds to a minute to finish their bill, and then we're gonna to start to vote on these things. It's important to note that the committee chair has the final say in what goes into the bill. So if the senior committee chair doesn't want uh, anyone, just wants to make the bill however they want, they can, but then they probably won't get any support from the people in their committee. The same thing is true in the junior committee, the chair makes the final decision. During committee hearings, the committee can negotiate between themselves however they want. This means a player might want to entice another player to include a specific amendment by perhaps giving them some political capital, maybe a political action card, maybe even trading away their lobby, which is actually a very powerful move in, in this game. Um, and of course, you can make promises about how you plan to vote later, but those promises do not need to be kept. So once all the negotiation is done, the committee will be left with the bill and then it's time to vote. Here we have the senior committee bill. The first thing that needs to happen is it needs to get a name. Whoever the committee chair is gets to name the bill. This bill uh, involves some drug rehab, some desalination projects, and a rescheduling of drugs. So maybe you wanna call it the salt-free drug for bill, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, if you have problems coming up with your own names, on the back of the rule book is a random name generator for your bills, which is really fun. You just roll the D10 three times and it'll make up names like the National Flag Reform Act. Anyway, after you've named your bill, players are going to get a chance to play one political action card. The first person to get to play the political action card is to the left of the committee chair. So it'll be someone who is not in the committee who gets to play their card first if they want. Players may play one and only one political action card. And if there is a political capital cost to the card, that cost must be paid. So had the first player played these volunteers, they'd lose one political capital and they would draw two more um, political actions which would be two more of these cards. So basically trade one capital for two additional cards later. Now, every player is gonna to get to play one card, but it's important to note that you may not play a card of the same color as one that's already been played. Um, and if, you're, if you have color issues, look at the icons in the upper left. So for instance, if 
If one player's play volunteers, another player cannot play another volunteers. And over time, you'll see that there's, but the next player could play over enforcement. The player after that could play national distraction. This means that the first players to play cards will have uh, the widest selection of cards they can play. Political action cards get resolved right when they're played if possible. And you go around until every player has a chance to play one. You don't have to play one if you don't want to. Once political action cards have been played and resolved, it is time um, for any final negotiations, if anybody wants to negotiate, and then it's time to vote. The way you vote is you take all of your political capital in one hand, you move some of it to your voting hand. Let's say in this case, the communitarian really likes this bill, so they're gonna put four political capital towards passing the bill. Then all players are gonna put their hands in the middle of the table. The um, person who is the committee chair is gonna count down three, two, one, vote, and players will either vote thumbs up or thumbs down. If you vote thumbs up, you take the political capital you spent and you put it in the thumbs up area on the board. If you voted thumbs down, you would put the political capital in the thumbs down area of the board. And this is the final result of our voting. We've got 10 political capital spent to pass the bill. We've got nine political capital spent to tank the bill. So the bill will pass. If there's a tie, the bill fails. All right, what does it mean when a bill passes? Well, now is when we're gonna score some victory points and do other things that will help us um, win the game, basically. So when a bill passes, if you need to look at it on the back of your, um, your faction board, is exactly what happens after voting. But basically three things will happen. You will score victory points. If your faction's icon was on the side that won, you will score three victory points for each of your icons on the side that won, as long as you voted for it, as long as you were on the winning side. In this case, the communitarian player, as this yellow icon, would score six victory points because their icon appears twice on that side of the bill. Now, if your icon appears on both sides, in this case, the communitarian would have been one on positive and one on negative, you score three victory points for this one, but you lose two for everyone on the other side. So if this was the bill, the communitarian player would have only scored one victory point. If you were on the losing side of the bill, you don't score any victory points at all. After scoring victory points, we look at what our lobbies did. Now lobbies, it doesn't matter if you're on the winning or the losing side of the bill. As long as you show loyalty to your lobbies, they will give you a benefit. In this case, the benefit is political capital. It's not victory points. So every player who had the environmental advocates as their lobby, which the bourgeois in this case do, would score two political capital. They would just grab two political capital from the bank and they would gain it. Any player who was on the losing side of the bill, but had the family values union as their uh, lobby, would actually get four political capital because that icon appears twice. Now, if an icon, if a lobby icon appears on both sides, it doesn't matter. You always score political capital if the lobby is on the side you voted for, because at least you moved something forward that they wanted. Now, if you voted against your lobby, which in this case, the communitarian player was a family values, had a family values lobby, and that icon appears on the negative side, even though the communitarian voted to pass the bill. Then that lobby leaves. You've been disloyal, you're out. This happens anytime there are more of your lobby's icons on the side you didn't for than the side you did vote for. If they're equal, you're fine. So now the communitarian has no lobby, but that's a sacrifice they made because they scored six victory points by voting for the bill. All right, so those are two of the three effects of the bill. You score victory points, you might get political capital. And the last effect has to do with changing the priorities of the government on a much bigger scale. Governments have focuses. 
and every bill that passes or fails will change the focus of the government. And that's what these little numbers here mean inside the thumbs up and thumbs down. And we track this on the big game board in the priority tracker. So drug rehab takes crime and makes it one less important of a topic for the country. So we go over to the political, the board, and we look for crime, which is right here. And we move this tracker one negative. The next uh, amendment was global warming, but it had a zero here, so it's not gonna move global warming as a priority. And the last one was rescheduling drugs, which actually has negative three on crime. So we're gonna take the yellow marker and we're gonna move it as far over as we can, which is actually as far over as we can go. So now crime is a much less important issue for the country to deal with. It's not something they're that focused on and everything else is still where it was at the start of the game. All right, the last two things we do, now that we've done victory points, we've done political capital, we've changed priorities, is we're gonna have an event happen. We're gonna take the top card of the event deck, we're gonna flip it over, um, and this one says, double the priority movement from the bill, which means however the priority moved would move twice as much, but crime is already pegged at six. And then there's this little green D10 that you might see on the event card. Whenever you see that, you're gonna roll the 10-sided dice. I rolled a three, so we look at issue number three, which in this case is employment, and we take the first available bill marker and we stick it on employment. Now you're done with the senior committee bill, so you wanna clean it up. You just wanna take all of the spent political capital and put it back in the bank. You wanna take your three amendments and you wanna tuck them under the board because they're done for the game, you won't see them again. And then you wanna shuffle back in any amendments that you didn't use back into the appropriate stack. Now the senior committee is done, you're gonna do the same thing now with the junior committee. They're gonna name their bill, they're gonna bring it to the floor, uh, they're gonna negotiate, they're gonna play political action cards, they're gonna vote, which will score victory points, political capital, and priority. Um, then they will roll the D10, maybe, they'll get an event, they'll roll the D10, and they'll add another one in this case there. Now, after the junior and senior bill have been uh, completely resolved, we're gonna start a new turn. And the new turns start by moving the senior and junior committee boards one space to the left. This will form new committees. Now the libertarian is in charge of the junior committee and it's made up of the libertarian, the blue collar and the traditionalist. And the senior committee is run by the nationalist and contains the communitarian player and the bourgeois. So your committees are gonna change uh, all the time. You're not always gonna work with the same players. As the game goes on, more bills will be voted on, more of these bill tokens will end up on issues, players will track their victory points along the victory point tracker, and the country's priorities will change based on these priority cues. Eventually, you're going to get down to the red bill tokens. If a red bill token gets placed on any issue that already has at least one token, then the game is going to end. So the game ending is kind of random. It's semi-random. You never know what's going to end. It will also end if the last bill token is placed. So in this case, if I if a bill was just voted on, and we rolled the six, and it worked, we go up to global warming, and that would trigger end game scoring. This is how end game scoring works. Each faction has its own goals for priorities for the country, which are listed by issue and where they want those yellow cubes to end up. So in this case, the bourgeois player um, wants civil rights to be in the purple and education to be in the blue, for example. So looking at the priority tracker, end game scoring is only going to occur on issues where there's a bill token. So education is not gonna matter in this case, Crime and healthcare won't matter. Infrastructure, national security won't matter. 
So of the one, two, three, four, five issues that will score victory points, we're going to look and see if the yellow cube ended up in the right zone. If there is one bill token there, you score three points, victory points, uh, if you ended up in the right spot. If there are two, you score four points. And if there happen to be three there, you can score five points. So the bourgeois player, civil rights is in the right spot. So they're gonna score three victory points for civil rights. Employment, they wanted to be in the blue, but it's actually still in the yellow. So they will not score for employment. Global warming is in the blue. They want it in the purple, so they won't score for that. Public integrity, they wanted blue. And immigration, they wanted blue, and both are in the wrong spot. So the bourgeois' endgame victory points are three. So we'll track that on the victory point tracker. One, two, three. And that's where the bourgeois ends for victory points. All six players will do that, and we will see who has the most victory points, and they will be the winner. Um, the, in the rule book, you can check. There's a bunch of tiebreakers there if you end up with a tie. And that's basically it. The meat of this game will always be about how you choose to spend your political capital, just like it is in real politics, and how much you balance the needs of your lobbyist versus your actual goals and what you want to have happen in the country. If you have any questions, send them along to us at Fund 11. And thanks again for supporting the partisans.